as we wrap up 2023, I thought it'd be a good time to review what's happened over the past year, what you found important, and what is coming in the new year. Now, as always, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you want more free training and subscribe to my mailing list if you want to hear about upcoming deals and other announcements. So let's jump right into the, the recap. So here's the new training that happened in 2023. So first, the new training on YouTube. I add 121 videos on YouTube that were around c -sharp development and SQL and Git and the other resources that you need around being a, a software developer. Also, that includes some of the dev question videos that were all about helping you with stuff that isn't just code related, but is overall life related when it comes to software development. So 121 new videos this year, that averages out to be a, about one new video every three days. Next, Let's talk the grand total on YouTube. Right now I have 601 videos. That number keeps changing, of course, as it goes up, but 601 videos on YouTube around software development. So we're building up quite the library of resources you can use to learn C Sharp on your own. Now, also, I do have the training resources at IamTimCorey.com. In this year, I add six more new courses to that training regimen, including the most recent one, which is the Blazor from start to finish course, which covers Blazor in .NET 8. So lots of cool stuff in there and even more coming, including the Game Development Master Course, which is in the process of being released as a pre-order. All right, so lots of new training happened this year, but let's talk about the numbers for this training. Some people find this interesting. I, I find it interesting. So let's talk through it. First of all, 7.1 million views. Now, I have never been the type of person that goes viral. It, just, you know, training in how to do something in C Sharp just isn't really viral. And I don't really pursue being viral. I pursue trying to help people get a real world experience into software development. But 7.1 million views just this year for my training content, that's a lot of people watching the content. In fact, that equals out to 868,300 watched hours. So that's the number of hours people have spent watching my content. That's a lot of time watching these free videos. And I just found out I have over 7,100 comments so far this year and counting. I do try to respond to as many of those comments as possible. I can't do every one, but I try very hard to respond to as many as possible as we go. I often find myself responding on my phone in between different things I'm trying to do or when I'm waiting the doctor or something like that. So I don't necessarily get into the super detailed responses or you know, if you have a super detailed technical question, I can't always respond to that because of the fact that I don't necessarily have the time, but I try and get as many responses out as possible to make sure that you are supported in what you're trying to do in this industry. Next up, 397,000 subscribers so far as of recording this video. I'm recording this before the end of the year, so there's, there's still some time. I've projected around somewhere in January, I should hit 400,000 subscribers, which would be pretty awesome. That's, that's, you know, a lot of people that are subscribed to the channel, that's pretty awesome. Okay, and this last one I want to put up here because a lot of times I have people that are like, man, you know, you must get lots of money because you're a YouTuber. And that's not true. But, you know, people often wonder, well, how much do you get, you know, because of, you know, these huge numbers? There's lots of, you know, people watching my content, 7.1 million views. That must equal a lot of money, right? Well, Yes, but it's $26,000 for the year. That's my YouTube income so far this year. Um, I actually think I went and did the last 365 days even more accurate. So I don't want to downplay that at all. So this actually includes a little bit of December of 2022, but that's a 365 day snapshot. Now, part of the reason why this number is so low is because of the fact that I intentionally turn off mid-roll ads. They're the only ad I can turn off if I have any ads on. 
So it's either turn off all the ads or turn off just mid-roll ads. And I have found that if I turn off all the ads on too many videos, YouTube starts adding ads back in. So if YouTube's gonna add the ads in anyways, I might as well add, get the money for that. And then I try and keep those ads as low as possible. They just give me more control over what I could do, but now it's just turn off mid-roll ads, which I do. I do not have mid-roll ads anywhere. In fact, if you ever see a video of mine that does have mid-roll ads, let me know. Just put a comment down below, say, hey, I saw a mid-roll ad here, can you look at that? Because I don't want them on. I don't like ads at all. I would love to turn them all off. But again, if YouTube's gonna turn them back on anyway, then I might as well get money for it. So this is the best I can do to kind of give you a good experience here. Now that $26,000 is a lot of money, but it's definitely not the, you know, pay for employees plus your own salary kind of money. And so that's where the, the income from IamTimCorey.com and those courses is what pays the bills and allows me to do even more of this content for free on YouTube. And we're gonna do even more next year. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But first, let's talk about the most popular videos I had this year. Now, these are not necessarily videos that I released this year, but they're the five most popular videos in this calendar year. So number five, and maybe you take a guess beforehand. What are the, the five you think are most popular? Let's go. So number five, Async Await. This actually was released, I believe in 2021, maybe. Um, so this is why I had hair still. Um, but this is Async Await. It's still a very, very popular video. It's probably one I have to go back and redo at some point, just because you know it, it's time to, to redo that code a little bit and talk a little more about how async, async and await work because it's a topic that confuses people, but at the same time, it's a really powerful topic and one that you really should know as a C-sharp developer. So this video is definitely still relevant. And while I do use code that's a bit older because the video is older, that code is still relevant today and it still works today. So async await is a great topic I actually have another video, Advanced Async, that goes even further in depth, but um, that's a, it's still a relevant and great video to watch. Number four is Intro to Web API. This is a more modern video. This is when we, we cover how APIs work and how to create an API and so on. So again, getting started into API development and understanding how APIs work it's a great topic to pick up and this video is great at getting you started. And in fact, this is kind of, kind of a theme I have with my videos. The videos that are most popular tend to be ones that are intra, intros. So an introduction to a topic is really popular. And the reason why is because I get you started knowing nothing and I get you started and get you going in a real world way. So you're ready to do you know, the, the basics of a topic right away. And you can just get started in that topic and also see if you're interested in that topic as well. So we're gonna kind of lean into that next year and kind of break those two sides apart. Do I, am I interested in, in it? And how do I get started in it? We're gonna do more of that next year. We're gonna talk more about that kind of in the coming months, but we're gonna get more into this so we can figure out how to get started in different areas well, not just the the tutorial that doesn't really help you in the real world but actual real world training that gets you a a good ways into using a particular topic now number three is another intro intro to windows forms which again it's a very popular topic even more popular than apis and i think part of the reason for this because windows forms is an older technology but it's still a rock solid technology it's one that's been around for 20 plus years and it's one that companies are still using to this day in a lot of their desktop development because it's what we had 20 years ago and they just continue to use those things because that's what they have. So knowing how to use it is important. And that's another important thing to think through. I've talked about it before, but when you're learning software development, you don't wanna just learn the absolute latest technology because 
companies aren't using just the latest technology. They're using 10-year-old technology or 15-year-old technology sometimes. And so knowing how to work with an older platform is really helpful. And with learning Windows Forms, you can learn the absolute latest stuff with .NET 8, but you can still use a lot of those same skills in .NET Framework, which can be 10, 15, 18 years old. So this is a really good way to kind of broaden your skills in a way that makes you relevant today, but also relevant for organizations that are still behind the curve a bit. So number three, intro to Windows Forms. Number two is the .NET Confusion Dev Question video. So in this video, we talked about what is .NET uh, framework versus .NET standard versus .NET core versus .NET and how do they all interact? And so we had a discussion about, you know, the history of .NET, why we have so many different versions of .NET, where we're going with .NET and so on. Now I do have a companion video for this, which didn't make the top five list, but the companion video for this actually has graphics. So some people wanted to just hear me talk about it, which is, this is a podcast episode. Dev questions are podcast episodes. So if you watch it on YouTube, you just see me talking. And if you listen to it on your you know podcast player, well, then you just hear me talking. So there's not really a whole lot of graphics with it. But I also have a video on my channel that talks about the .NET confusion that is a, you know, here's a PowerPoint and kind of draws out for you the various parts of how .NET evolved and why, why it was named certain ways and kind of clearing up that confusion so that it makes a lot more sense. So this was my number two most popular video this year. And then number one most popular video by far this year was how to learn C Sharp in 2023 because people are trying to figure it out. Where, where do you start? How do you get started? What things do you learn next? What's the order? What's the path to learning C Sharp? Now, I can tell you that this video is great and it has a great path. And you know, if you want to learn it today and go through the same video, even though it's going to be 2024 soon, it would still work. It's still relevant. Um, we will do one for 2024, kind of updating a few things and, and changing a few things, but this does is still relevant and it does still apply to learning C Sharp. But I have struggled over developing a good path for learning C Sharp. Some people are very good at, at being declarative and saying, this is the path to learning C Sharp, or this is the path to learning software development. The problem is, is that this is not a one size fits all solution the path for you is not the path for somebody else. And where you're starting is not the same place as where somebody else is starting. So understanding how to, you know, follow a path that works for you and is right for you is a little more complex than just this is the path. And so we're going to be working on more of that. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but this is the path. This video right here will show you the path to get started and and help you understand where the next steps are. So there's a long way you can go down the path that is the same for everybody, and then you can start branching. And we'll talk to you about setting up your foundation properly, about learning C Sharp as a language, not getting stuck on front end, back end, you know, certain UI frameworks or certain ways of doing things. Too often people try to get to the end before they start. And that's not a wise way of going about things. Instead, you want to start at the beginning and build a great foundation in the language itself. Because if you learn the language itself, then you're gonna be set up for success in anything you do. And if you have to change down the road, you're still set up for success. So I've encouraged you to watch this video, check it out and really kind of figure out, you know, where am I and what do I still have to learn? Now, this video does talk about how I have some paid courses that line up with this path. And the biggest one is a C-sharp master course. It's also my most popular course because it not only is a training for C-sharp, but it's that same, it's that learning path. 
starting from nothing and taking you all the way through to being a junior or even mid-level developer if you practice it, where it aligns things up so that you learn things in the right order and the right way. So we'll cover more of that later, but this is the number one video of the year. Now let's talk about the future because I'm sure you want to know, you know, is next year going to be just the same as this year or going to do other things? What's going to go on? Well, a little column A, a little column B. So let's talk through it. First of all, I'm going to continue my Monday training. So every Monday I put out a training video. Now, of course, you know, vacations, illnesses, whatever, every once in a while I might miss. But my goal is to have every Monday have a video out that covers some type of training, something around software development. Typically it's my code, my screen with code on it. And I, I type out code, we, we learn about code and how to use it. That's going to continue. So 52 new training videos is my goal for this year, at least. Now I do more than that, but uh, 52 training videos is the, the baseline goal for this coming year. Also, I'm going to continue my Thursday podcast, which is the Dev Questions podcast. I answer questions like, you know, how do I get a job in software development? How do I get a job with no work experience? You know, all those questions that you have as a software developer that aren't answered by just here's some code. So I continue that series that's on Thursdays. Again, the goal is 52 weeks of content there. Now I have started introducing other people to the podcast to get their perspectives on software development as well, to kind of broaden your horizons and give you more voices of experience, teaching you how to navigate this world of software development. That stuff happened last year. It happened the year before. It's going to happen this coming year. That's the plan. But I'm going to add more free training sites. So if you go to csharpprojects.com, you'll see a site that gives you all the different C-sharp project types and an introduction to each one of them, as well as an introduction to the section like desktop development, web development, mobile development, and so on. But I'm going to be adding more free training sites for other purposes. So you'll hear more about that, especially if you're on the mailing list. So if you're on the mailing list, which is a link in the description, if you're on that mailing list, you'll hear about these new resources we're going to add for free so that you can be even more equipped. We're also going to add an e easier ways to get started in software development and not just at the, I know nothing, but even as experienced developers, there's new topics that come out that you might not be experienced with. And so we'll help you get started in those topics. Now we've done a little bit of that in the paid side with our accelerate courses. So if you wanted to learn, for example, uh, Microsoft SQL and learn how to be a SQL developer, well, we have an accelerate course that in a weekend, that's the goal is in a weekend that you could take the course, practice it and be up to speed on the basics of being a SQL developer. So that's the paid side. But what we're talking about for this coming year is doing more things like that for free. We have more free resources to help you get started in different topics and in different areas. Also, we're going to be working on better job ready resources. So what's the goal of being a software developer? Now, for some of us, it's just fun. We like being software developers, even if we're not getting paid. But for most of us, when you talk about being a software developer, you kind of want to have a paycheck associated with that. And you want to have that paycheck get bigger and bigger. And you want to be, you know, in a better and better position. That might mean changing jobs. It might mean becoming a consultant. It might mean doing contract work. There's a number of different ways you can increase your income through software development. Well, we're going to help with that by giving you more resources to help you get a job, help you get a better job, help you in the industry, get more money from your skills. So that's coming this year. And finally, we're also going to add more learning paths. We're going to add kind of guidance on Here's how to get from point A to point B in your career, whether that's 
you know, starting way at the beginning with C Sharp, we have that. But, you know, what if you're starting now with web development where you already know certain things? How do you just add web development to your, your list of skills? Or how do you add Blazor development to your list of skills? So we're going to add more learning path opportunities for you. Now, I want to point something out. All six of these items are all free content. These are all free initiatives that we're planning on adding this year and continue to grow this year. The reason we're doing this is because our primary goal as a company, I own a company and our goal is to provide great free training for software developers. That's our goal. Our goal is to help software developers learn it and get better at it. And our secondary goal is we need money to take care of that. And so what we do is we use the, the proceeds from imtimcorey.com sales. So all of our paid courses, they all go to fund free content. And we have quite a bit of money that has been starting to build up from our paid content. And we're, we're funneling that into even more free content for you because we think that everyone deserves the opportunity to become a great software developer, not just those who can afford it. So if you have purchased anything, thank you very much. You've helped this happen. If you have watched a free YouTube video, some of that ad, that ad revenue has gone towards making more free content. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of this channel and watching the content, getting value out of it and contributing by leaving a thumbs up, subscribing, leaving a comment or otherwise being engaged with this training. So thank you very much. This is going to be an even better year coming forward. We have even more free stuff we can do for the community. All right. So that's it. That's kind of the recap of 2023. I can't wait to see what we do in 2024. Thanks for being a part of it. And as always, I am Tim Corey.